Okay, so a few months ago, I put out a video about this Aldi boombox, which cost £30. It was generally well received. It was just a quick video that I knocked out in a day because the product was only in store for a few days. However, it did draw the wrath of a number of people who were very upset that I hadn't said don't buy it you should get an old boombox replace the belts or get an old cassette record because they're much better than this kind of nonsense and I've got half a dozen videos like that in my uh, back catalogue if you look on the channel you'll see I've got plenty of cassette videos and I'll always say in them even in this one I said you're better off getting an old device. My cassette recorder player thing in the hi-fi, my main one, cost me about £600, but it's a really good quality model from the 1990s, which has all the features on. So yes, let me just say that up front before anyone repeats this back to me, even though I've said it to you now, you're better off getting an old cassette deck and doing it up. Right, now I've said it, let me show you some more cassette decks that I've got, or boom boxes, I suppose. Because after that one came in and went out of the stores, people said, well, what can I get instead of that? Is there anything similar that's new that I can get? Well, on eBay, sorry, not on Amazon, you'll find this one, the Sony CFD-S70. This has been on there for a year and a half at the time I'm recording the video now. It came out in 2016 and um, it's a FM, AM radio cassette and CD player. Today, the day I'm putting this video together, this costs £50 on Amazon, which doesn't sound bad at all, as long as it's not a complete waste of time. So I thought I'd pick one up and we'll have a look at it together. Um, this one is actually a refurb. I got this on eBay a few weeks ago and it cost me, I think it was £25, including delivery, because I'm not really too interested in this model. The one I want to show you is the one that came out after this, although it's not available in the UK or US and elsewhere at the moment. The one that I'm showing you is this. This is the Sony CFD S401, only available in Japan. Came out ooh, a few weeks ago, perhaps a couple of months ago now. Same thing, FM, AM radio, cassette and CD player, um, but it's just the next model up. It's like the one after that. So what we're doing here is we're going to be looking at these two models uh, and I'll just see how good they are really. But yeah, uh, again, if you can get a good old machine, you'll get a better one than these because nobody is licensing the Dolby noise reduction system anymore for one thing. So neither of these decks will uh, have that on them. So if you want that, it's going to be on older equipment and things like um, the ability to record onto chrome or metal tapes and things. Those are all on older machines as well. Also, a lot of the mechanisms in these cassette decks seem to come from the same factory in China. And OK, everything's made in China, but this seems to be particularly low end China type stuff. So I'm hoping these are going to be at least a decent quality. And one thing we found out about that Aldi model after I'd uh, done the quick video was that it was actually mono. Both speakers played the same thing. It played the whole track, the left and right stereo tracks, but uh, mono, so both speakers were the same, um, which is only something that I discovered after I put the video out because it was a rather quick one. So I'm definitely going to test that on these. I've got some tapes that I can pan from left to right that I've done on the recordings. So we'll make sure it comes out of both speakers differently this time. So let's get on with it. I'd like to start off by comparing the current pre-recorded cassette tape market to how it was when the format was at its height. So here's three albums that I bought back in the day, and back then it wasn't uncommon to get a pre-recorded album on chrome tape. As you can see, all these three are on chrome, and they've all got Dolby B noise reduction. And a while ago, I did a video about the Digilog tape duplication system, which resulted in some of the best sounding pre-recorded cassette tapes that were made. This one even has Dolby S noise reduction on it. So compare that to what's coming out at the moment. Well, the first thing is you're going to get no kind of Dolby noise reduction technology used on these tapes. And the tape stock used, well, it's going to be type one, ferric tape, because there's no company manufacturing any other kinds of tapes. Even if you got a re-release of a 1980s album that would have originally had Dolby noise reduction of some description, it doesn't have it on it anymore. And the reason I mention this is because if somebody has just started buying cassettes new for the first time recently, then it's not a problem that the current crop of cassette players don't support the features they once did, because the current crop of cassette releases don't require them either. 
Now for the purposes of demonstrating the machines in this video, I'm using music from two sources which won't hit a YouTube copyright match. The cassettes come from the web address you see on screen now, and then I've burnt a CD and I'm also using MP3s which come from the YouTube audio library. Oh, and I thought you might find this interesting. When I reviewed that Aldi boombox, it cost £30 in store. Well, after the video went out, somebody found it for sale wholesale on the Alibaba site. And if you buy enough of them, you could have got it as low as a dollar a piece. Quite amazing that they could sell something at that price and still make a profit on it. And I hope these two Sony machines have been built to a much better standard than that one. Now, I paid a heck of a lot more than $1 for the machine that I imported from Japan. Over there, it doesn't cost all that much. The costs were mostly associated with the importation of it. Now, I know people always ask, why do you buy these things? Why would you spend so much on a portable cassette player? Well, I don't really need it. The reason I bought it is because I'm running a YouTube channel, and that channel relies on fresh and interesting things to demonstrate to you. And rather than just showing you the same things as everyone else, I wanted to show you something that you probably haven't seen before. And I doubt anyone else has reviewed this cassette machine from Japan. So I'll be showing you that, although I'm going to show it you second because I want to do the UK model first because this one seems to have a lot of controls on it and I was thinking if I start off with the English language one maybe that would show me what some of these features are before I start using them on the Japanese one and besides which it'll give us a nice baseline a low point and we'll see if we can grow from there. The eBay I bought these from had 36 refurbs for sale I'm not quite sure what that's about but I did notice that mine has a bit of a rattle hopefully I'll figure out what that is in due course. This would take six C cell batteries if I was running it off batteries, but I'll be plugging it in the mains. It's a very lightweight, very plasticky device. I know it's got a Sony label on it, but you kind of get the feeling that they've rebadged something from another cheaper manufacturer. But I'm not going to jump to any conclusions. We'll see how it sounds. I noticed the eject mechanism is rather eager, which again smacks of a cheaper type device though. If I give it a shake here, you can see that the bit of plastic that was rattling around falls out. It doesn't look like anything too important, just part of the case or something. So hopefully that won't affect anything. They include the instructions with this, and it's one of those large Sony fold-out instruction documents, which are a little bit annoying to read. I've got the power cable, which is on one of those IEC C7 figure of eight type connectors at the end. So I'll just plug that into the back here. And you can see the display is now on. So let's put a cassette in here. We'll see how it sounds. I wanted to show you the cassette mechanism, but I can't really get a good angle on it. By the way, ignore the dust that's on this. I was doing something before and it seems to have got on the case. It's, it's cocaine. No, no, it isn't cocaine. I was cleaning the worktop with, is it GIF or ZIF or something? It seems to have created some dust. But anyway, uh, it notice it jumps straight into trying to read the CD, but of course there is no CD in there. Now, if there had been a CD inside, the controls for it are on the right here. However, I've also noticed there's an audio in button. Looking around the case, I've found the audio in socket on the left-hand side next to a headphone out. Notice the cassette buttons on the top are reversed from what you'd normally expect. And of course that reflects the cassette mechanism's orientation, but it is a little bit unusual to be pressing a play button that's pointing towards the left. Anyway, let's press it and have a listen. And I'm happy to report after doing my testing that this machine is definitely playing back in stereo. You'll be able to hear some samples being played through it later on in the video. Now, if you want to fast forward, press the button that would normally be rewind. And if you want to rewind, well, obviously you press the fast forward styled button. OK, so you get used to this, but it does show a little bit of a lack of care to me having the mechanism that way around. Now, given that the tape player is just one of the three components on here, I thought I should try out the other two. So starting off with the radio, and I've got to say that it doesn't pick the signal up very strongly. I can't seem to get it tuned in just right. You're always a little bit out, or at least I was in my house. Now, I don't have the greatest FM reception here, but I can usually get a nice clean signal. With this device, I always seem to be just a bit out, so there was always some hiss in the background. Anyway, moving on to the CD player, I'm going to try an audio CD first of all that I've made up of the YouTube audio library's music and, and that's working fine as you can see here. It does have a mega bass button on this machine. Now without the mega bass on, 
it's a very very thin sound no bass whatsoever with it switched on it's very slightly better it doesn't make a heck of a lot of difference but it's the kind of thing that you want to leave on all the time because it's just so so thin if you don't have it switched on but with it on I wouldn't even say it was bass, I'd just say it was a bit more warm, a little bit, but there's definitely no thump coming out of this machine. Now, trying it with my MP3 disc here, and putting that in the machine, I noticed it was taking a little while to read, as of course a CD of MP3 tracks usually does. It's not something most people tend to use nowadays, but it works fine, and if you'd put the music into different folders, there's a button on there that would enable you to drill down through those as well. I noticed also, I should have mentioned on the radio tuner, you can store about 30 different stations, and you've got three buttons on the left there where you can store your favourite three. And as you can see, you don't get any track names listed on that display for those MP3 files, it's purely the track numbers shown. Okay, so that's the first of the two Sony models tested, and when it comes to the quality of cassette playback, it's a big step up from that previous Aldi device. It's in stereo for one thing, and it doesn't exhibit the levels of wow and flutter that plagued that machine. It does have a very, very thin sound though through those speakers, even with the mega bass button switched on. It's a bit of an insult calling it mega bass, I think. Anyway, that's the first one done. Let's go on to the second one. Right, so we're on to the main event now, the Japanese-only CFDS401. Simple packaging, inside which you get the mains lead, the recorder itself, some cleaning Q-tips there for the heads in the cassette mechanism. The instructions are obviously all in Japanese, but it's quite a thick book. That. There's a lot of stuff in there, so hopefully you'll be able to figure all this out. And it's upside down, so we'll just flip it over. Got the tape on here holding down the various doors for the mechanism for the CD player and cassette. And once I've removed all those, definitely seems a better device, heavier, more solid. On the front, this sticker tells me that I can record off the radio. I think it says it's got timed recordings. We've got a microphone input and it's battery powered. And as far as the batteries go, well, it takes three triple A's at the top. That's for the clock and then six C cells across the bottom to power the rest of the mechanism. Now, I haven't got that many C cell batteries in the house, so I'm going to have to plug this one into the wall. It uses a standard connector at this end, so I can just swap the lead out. However, I've got 230 volts coming out of the wall, and this thing runs on 100 volts, so I don't want to fry it just by plugging it straight in. I'm going to use a step-down power converter, which steps my power down to the power that this thing accepts. And I've got this one set to deliver the 100 volts this device requires. Now looking around the machine itself, a lot of buttons on here, some of them self-explanatory, that'll be snooze, these will be the different sources, that's the power button on the left there, the controls for the tape and CD mechanism, although there's a few additional buttons there. Notice the eject mechanism is just a simple push down, it pops up nice and smooth compared to the other one. Let's have a look at the CD mechanism, it's gonna work in the same way, you just have to push the button down on the top and it ejects nice and smoothly as well. So just seems a little bit better quality overall than the other machine. Now, whenever I come across anything where I'm unsure of the function, for example, are these two middle sockets inputs or outputs, I'm going to use the Google Translate app. And you can see on there, the one on the left is voice center and microphone input voice center will be line in. So we've got line in, mic input and a variable mic volume on the right there. I notice along the bottom of the machine there appears to be a bass port and that combined with the larger speakers and a heavier overall weight, better build quality, makes me think that this one is going to sound better than the previous one. So I'm looking forward to finding out. Now I'm going to play a cassette first of all because that's really what this video is about. Does anyone make a decent new cassette player? So we'll find that out and then I'll go through the other features like setting the clock and all that kind of stuff afterwards. Incidentally, I noticed something with both of these machines, which might be a coincidence, but I suspect not. When you switch them on for the first time, you'll see the volume number at the top of the screen. It defaults to 11. I wonder if Sony are fans of Spinal Tap, because the volume will go all the way up to 31. It's funny how they decided on 11 as the default. Anyway, let's play a cassette in this and have a quick listen. Now later on in the video I'll play you back some samples I've captured over the headphone output but first off I can confirm yes it's in stereo 
and yes it sounds a heck of a lot better than the previous machine a much richer solider bassier sound quality and look i've even got a nice feature like a digital counter at the top of the display there And it also plays plenty loud enough without distorting the music. It's not going to blast any ghettos, but it's suitable for playing anywhere around the house. Now, I'm trying some of the other features out, like the CD player, which is working fine. We've got a countdown sleep timer we can activate on that one as well. You'll notice on the display here, I've got standard digits again. There's no text information that shows on this display for either CDs with text or MP3s. It's just your usual track number and timers. Now, if you had a large enough bedside table, you could use this as an alarm clock. It's got the nice large clock display on the front, and it will wake you up with any of the functions. The CDs, playing CDs or MP3s, the cassette, or the radio, or a buzzer. So I'm setting it here to wake me up from a tape. I'm choosing the volume. I'm going to set it all the way up to maximum at 31, and I've set it for 112 in the afternoon. So at 112, the alarm will go off, and it'll play me the cassette. So let's just have a look at that. For the sake of completeness, I tried out the radio on this one. It works on AM or FM. I only really pick up things on FM around here. And I can confirm it tunes in much better than the earlier device. I'm not getting the same issues of background hiss here. I'm able to get nice clean signals. And how, how often do we see Category 5, which is 160? Well, we see that... Now, you can store up to 30 presets if you could get that many different stations in your area. And those are accessed by using the track skip buttons. But you can also put your three favourites on these buttons along the front. Now, one of the things advertised on that sticker on the front is the fact that you can get this device to make timed recordings off the radio. You can set it to record either 60, 45, 30 or 15 minutes, which of course correspond with the length of one side of a cassette. I'm setting mine to record for 15 minutes on FM preset number one from 1.30 in the afternoon. Now, I know there'll be people thinking, well, why would you want to do that? Well, it doesn't matter if you don't want to do it, somebody else might do, and if they do, then they can buy this machine. After all, this is a niche device nowadays. There aren't many people wanting to play cassettes. There probably aren't that many people wanting to play MP3s off CDs either. But if that person exists and they want a device like this to put in their kitchen or their bedroom or their garage, then here it is. And it will work. As you can see here, it recorded from half past one to 1.45, then stopped recording, and then I'll listen back to the tape later on and it had done its job. So you can't ask for more than that. I should also mention that the tape deck has an auto track skip function. You can jump forward and back to whatever track you want to on a long tape, as long as, of course, there's a gap, a bit of a blank in between the tracks that are recorded on there. It can identify that and jump to the relevant point. It's not the most sophisticated tape deck. It doesn't have auto reverse. It doesn't have auto blank skip to go past that blank section at the end of a tape. But having track skip is definitely a nice thing. Now, if I'm reading this correctly, inside the manual is telling me to record on tape type 1, the ferric tapes. But for playback, I can play tape type 1, 2 and 3, ferric, chrome and ferrochrome. However, I can't use tape type 4, the metal tapes, at all for recording or playback. But that's not too much of a hardship. Most people nowadays are going to be using only tape type 1 in a device like this. Now, the next section, I want to show something for the tape enthusiasts, the guys over on tapeheads.net, for example, that will want to know what kind of mechanism this machine uses. Unfortunately, I can't get the tape heads to appear. However, there is a mode that enables you to clean the machine by holding down two buttons together 
which bring out the tape heads even when a cassette isn't present, which is the thing that normally prevents them from appearing. So you can see here, the tape heads are now visible, and I've tried to take some pictures so you can see the model numbers of the different devices. So on the right there, that's the play and record head. On the left is the erase head. If I flip the image upside down, you better see the numbers for that erase head as well. So enthusiasts, go ahead, look up those numbers. I don't know what they mean, but I know some people are really into this stuff and they'll be able to tell me that this is a terrible device, not worth buying. However, I don't think it's all that bad. It's something that's designed really as a kind of lifestyle type thing. It's not sold as a high end piece of hi-fi equipment. It's just for people that want to play cassettes or CDs, maybe on a counter in the kitchen. I'd suggest putting it in a garage, listening to music there, or maybe somewhere else in the house where you just want to cassette player nearby or a CD player. It's not the main hi-fi in your house, but it's certainly a pretty decent device, I think. Let's have a listen to some music play back from it. I'm going to use my main cassette deck here to compare it against, and I'm not going to be using any Dolby noise reduction because it doesn't have it on this one. We'll record it over the headphone output and we'll compare all three using the digitally recorded PCM audio. So I'm going to use this cassette that came from Anders Enger Jensen. It's no longer available, I'm afraid, this one, but it's the best pre-recorded cassette I've got, which isn't going to hit a copyright match because it's recorded on chrome tape. Please ignore the Dolby logo. That was a mistake. It doesn't have any kind of Dolby noise reduction on. It's chrome tape, though. That's definitely for sure. If we compare it to the other tape that is produced, you can see this one is on ferric. So we've got a good, decent quality tape here. So let's run it in all three machines and we'll see if we can spot any difference in quality between them. So first off, the Hi-Fi deck. like the song that never starts but anyway we've got the two devices here that do sound very similar over the headphone output i've got to say through the speakers completely different to one another but over the headphone not that much difference however the japanese model does have more bass to it as you might have noticed and that's because it seemed to have a mega bass that's always on there's no way to switch it off on this device so i thought i'd go back and put the mega bass on on the original one and re-record it with that so let's just have a listen Now, to my ears, with the Mega Bass switched on, they're pretty much indistinguishable from one another. However, just for a bit of fun, let's try playing that same section back through the Aldi boombox. Now, I found that one very unpleasant to listen to. It made the fillings in my mouth tingle. It's just so metallic sounding. Anyway, we'll move away from that. We'll have a listen to the other ones now, but we'll listen to the section where the music fades away just to hear how much background noise there is. So when it comes to background noise, out of the two Sony portables, it's the Japanese import model which edges it slightly, but the UK one doesn't put in too poor a showing here either. But this is over the headphone output. When it comes to listening to these devices through the speakers, which is really what the majority of the use of these is going to be for, 
the Japanese one just sounds so much better, a much richer quality of sound compared to the UK model, which is also very lightweight, a bit plasticky, low on features compared to the Japanese one, which has all those additional features like the track skipping, we've got the soft touch controls. You can use it as an alarm clock to wake you up to any of the different components on here. Really nice machine for the price that it costs over in Japan. But I've got to say in my outro here, I might sound a little bit negative on the UK one, and that's because I was really comparing them at the time over the speaker output rather than the headphone output. But anyway, here we go. So that one turned around in the end. I really wasn't expecting it. I was thinking that both the devices would be pretty similar to this one. Although I knew this one had soft touch control, so I was hoping it was going to be a little bit better, but I was surprised at how different they are. In fact, this one is a little bit less than I expected. Very lightweight, very thin sound, and even the radio doesn't seem to pick very much up. It's always going to uh, hiss in the background. So I couldn't recommend this one. I paid £30 for it, and I'm not even sure it's worth that. On the other hand, if this model was available in the UK and uh, they sold it for, say, 50 to 70 pounds, I'd recommend it. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing what I did, though, and getting it from Japan. I bought it from Amazon in Japan and then there was an intermediate shipping company and there was costs involved in that and the import duties and the postage. So it's about 150, 160 pounds by the time it got to me, this thing. Although in Japan, I think it works out about 60 ish or something. So if it was in the UK and it was available at 60, 70 pounds, then I'd definitely recommend this one. Of course, it would help with all the buttons being labeled in English as well, because it does take a little bit of time to figure out. You have to hold some down, hold two together to do certain things. But the sound quality on this, for what it is, I'm not comparing it to the very best cassette players ever made, but for what it is, it's pretty good. It's got a decent, rich quality of sound on here. I like the nice big display on the front. Of course, there aren't many people now playing CDs, cassettes, and listening to the FM radio. Well, I know there's people listening to the FM radio, but you tend to do it in your car. But yeah, um, for people that want to do those things and want an alarm clock that can wake them up with a cassette or radio or a, a CD player or MP3s off a CD, well, it does a really good job. Um, so what I'm saying is, don't buy one yet, but if you keep your eye on Amazon, hopefully, Sony will start selling this model in the UK at some point, replacing the older one. And unlike that one, which is pretty nasty, this isn't bad at all. In fact, yeah, thumbs up on this one. Well done, Sony, for actually bringing out a decent cassette player. Uh, it's not something you see very much nowadays. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. Oh, that's a useful review. The best new cassette recorder. What's next? I don't know. Perhaps the best mangle. Or perhaps the dimmest light bulb. The fastest penny farthing. Heaviest suitcase. Best Blackberry phone. Oh, sick burn. You're going to get complaints about that. They'll probably try to fax them through. Well, you're on your own on this one. 
I'm not getting involved. I get enough complaints as it is. Why? What's wrong with joking about a phone? No one likes being told that something they bought is no longer the best. Well, that's just daft. You can't take sides with a consumer electronics company. Exactly. It's just like those kids who had Commodore 64 versus Spectrum fights in the playgrounds 30 years ago. Yeah, I mean, how does Colour Clash compete against hardware scrolling and the SID chip? What? The Spectrum was the best. The games were more inventive and they weren't all in blocky shades of brown. Well, clearly you've never played Uridium and Power Droid on the 64. Well, have you played Chase HQ or any of the Ultimate games on a Spectrum? Well, you just wait until my new The 64 arrives from Indiegogo. Then you'll see which one's best. More like, if it arrives. Anyway, I pre-ordered the Spectrum next from Kickstarter. That's gonna blow it out of the water. Well, it seems like this war isn't over yet. Oh, it's already over and I won. You just don't realise it yet.